Okay. Okay. We'll pick chairs. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jennifer Strong. I'm the creator and oftentimes host behind a bunch of podcasts for Newsroom, so, uh, including Tech Review, The Wall Street Journal, ProPublica, and coming very soon, a brand new show on PRX for public media. And it's great to be joined here by the founder and chief executive of PixArt. And I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Let me do like a quick uh, check of the audience. Uh, let's uh, measure the cool factor of the audience. How many of you heard about PixArt? No. OK, pretty cool. So I like that. Uh, I was at this stage you know, one year ago. It's very good to be back. So I'm a founder and CEO of PixArt, uh, one of the largest mobile photo and video editing platforms. Uh, we have over 1 billion installs of the app. <clears throat> so over 1 billion times, people installed our app on their platform. And we have 1 billion edits every month happening on our product. So 1 billion times, uh, our users creating a content every month on our platform. Uh, and uh, I started uh, the, um, Pixar because of my daughter uh, and with the mission to make creativity available and affordable by everyone. And also for the sake of today's discussion, which is about AI, I am also a former scientist. So I used to be you know, doing AI back in the 90s when AI was not cool. And, uh, and we were using really old school you know, uh, mainframes with the you know, size of a two bedroom apartment. And, uh, and I was trying to cheer the, teach computers to play chess, but it was too early. So we failed, and we were always dreaming about the future when we have a AI to be part of our life and make very smart things. And as an AI scientist, I'm thrilled to, have, uh, to live to the you know, current reality when we have AI as a part of, uh, becoming part of our life. So, and it's, it's now in the core of our product, too. Yep. All right, so taking a step back, though, okay. a lot of hands went Too up, fast. but there are probably people in the room who have never used it, don't really know what it does. How would they use PixArt? What does it do? So PixArt is, uh, so think about, you know, how, you know, the, you can, you want to create something, something visual, and anything, almost anything visually you want to create, we can help you. It's an all-in-one product with visual, photo, video editing, and design, uh, and they're now very much empowered by AI. So we used to do AI back in 2016, 2017. We already started embedding AI in our product. So we have a, for like first magic filters back in 2017. Uh, and uh, we have a filters like AI background, AI background removal, uh, replace object, AI generate images, etc. So we've been you know, doing lots of AI features. But if you go back to the roots, why we created, I created this product for my daughter to make her to be creative, to be uh, in a positive environment with other creatives to co-create and have fun. Yep. Yeah. So a few things you might have heard have happened uh, with AI in the last year since you were on this stage. Yes, a couple of things, yes. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things. How has is, how is the last year changed essentially your business and what you do? Yes, I think there are, I see major shift. Uh, when I was talking last year at the conference uh, and I was talking about AI, and uh, people really don't understand. I mean, are you really like, going to really, it's going to be really like a, such a strong thing? Mm -hmm. And there were lots of skepticism about AI. I mean, now everybody on board, I think we understand it's a very disruptive power. It's, uh, I call it a, like a new electricity, when it's really changing everything we are doing, like, you know, the way we do our business, the way we create, the way we communicate. So, uh, I think it's a very disruptive power. In many sense, it's in a positive way. It's helping us to be more and more productive. Mm -hmm. What are some specific ways your work has changed or the app has changed with the last, especially six months? Yeah, I mean, we are actively launching new AI features. Uh, we are, you know, I, as of the day, actually, we launched a new tool called text to give which are now to generate GIFs on our product. Uh, it's very cool. It's one of the first in our market. I don't think... I haven't seen any, anyone similar to what, what we are doing now. Mm. So if you want to create like animated GIFs, you can you know, use now PixArt for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are launching, you know, like almost like one major AI product a month. Yeah, and you made something actually, a video that might help people visualize right. some of what you're talking about. Exactly. 
So let me, you know, many people ask, you know, how you use AI, how, what is the practical use? Many still use AI as a, as a tool, as a toy, as like, create something like, you know, cool and interesting. But let me show you something. I hope you also get uh, this lemonade distributed, some of you, I hope you get, get some. Okay, good. So let me show how this was created, because this was generated by AI. And let me, let me show the, like the, the whole use. This is not a lemon. It's a use case of how you can use AI to create something inspirational and cool. Yeah. So, and AI is not a replacement for human creativity. As you can see, uh, we are using AI to generate like, like the, the, the main uh, the object on the screen, but there are lots of human editing that's happening behind the scene. So you can see, using our tool, you can add a text, you can uh, make a style text, you can, you can you know, crop it, you can apply filter, you can you know, modify, and ultimately you can create like a, you know, the animated, like a banner, animated banner if you want. So you want to do like promotion and uh, you want to do like a marketing, that's the way to go. So it saves a lot of time, but it's very, very practical. So instead of like, you know, going to the, like a, a agency or finding like a designer to do this kind of things, almost everybody can do this kind of works with a little bit of patience and creativity. So this is a very practical use case, how you can use this to launch a new product and how you can uh, promote new product. Yeah, so that's a project that you did yourself. What are some of the other things you're seeing creators do on your site? Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, we have lots of like personal use cases, you know, people using like to improve their selfies, uh, apply filters uh, like for their, you know, personal stuff. But more and more we see prosumer use cases. More and more we see our, actually one interesting statistics. Uh, almost 70% of our users edit their uh, creation, AI created stuff. We are generating 2 million images a day the AI-generated stuff, and 60, 70% of users do post-processing of the images. So it's not like just you create and share. Right. It's like you create, and then you go to editor, you modify, and you add your own uh, personality, and then you share to the world. So basically, that was we see 70% of our users do uh, the, the editing after they uh, they created uh, right. you know, something. So they're not just generating something not, no. and then done. They're creating something that then, or having generated Absolutely. something that they can then work with afterwards. Absolutely. So in this big shift to generative that we're all talking about everywhere all the time right now, I'm wondering what other fundamental shifts you've seen with the platform. Like for example, do you have different competitors now than you had a year ago? Yeah, it's very crowded space. Uh, of course, we see like new technologies, uh, new startups appearing almost every day, almost every hour. I mean, there's a new something new and some new announcements in a, on a Twitter or somewhere. It's very crowded, very noisy. Uh, but for us, it's very important to really to understand why people are using AI. It's not about the technology, it's the value we provide to our users. So we're really focusing on the, what kind of value we can provide and how we can be a co-pilot of creativity. So for us, we see AI is not a replacement for human creativity. Okay. We see AI as a more like a co-pilot, an assistant. It's somebody who's helping you to be more productive and create uh, and have fun. Uh, so AI is actually taking care of most, you know, like labor intensive part of the creation process and you are taking the more fun part of the creation. So basically you can generate ideas, you can see, you know, like lots of kind of variations and all cool stuff, and ultimately you can make something which is, would be outstanding because of the, of the tools you use. Yeah, and your answer might be different to this because of your background in AI before you got to running Pixar. But I'm curious, I mean, for a lot of creative companies right now, they feel like their whole business model is shifting, their world is shifting. You seem pretty relaxed. Yes, yeah, I mean, I am not only relaxed, I'm also excited. I am excited because I see this as a new opportunity. Uh, it's, it's a threat and opportunity at the same time. It's a disruptive technology. It's going to disrupt the market. It's going to disrupt many companies. But also it's a good opportunity. Mm. I think the competition will be not between like 
businesses and AI, but between businesses which, which is using AI with the businesses which are not using AI you know, in a smart way. And the same with the people. I mean, people are not going to keep, compete with AI directly. They are going to compete with other people which are using AI. So for us, it's important to really embrace the, you know, the technology and understand the opportunities and be very fast to delivering these opportunities to our users. Yeah. For the creative community, though, I think it's probably important we talk about this little fear there, right? How are you thinking about that? Or what is the feedback you're getting from your creative community about that? And how many of you from here is like a creative community? Are creatives? Okay. Huh? Significant. So are you scared? Scared? Okay. Not scared. Okay. That's good. Because I don't think you shouldn't. No. Uh, again, like another statistics, only 5% of creatives are not using AI these days. So 95% using in you know, one way or another. It's ideation. It's uh, you know creating assets or uh, doing some final design works. Another statistics, which is also I'm giving you some, a couple of interesting statistics, but 40% of creatives which use AI, they make more money than the year before. So that means. If you use, money, uh, use AI, you can be more productive, you can make even more money, you can make more, more revenue than if you don't use it. Of course, it's going to change the way you work, the way you, all, you know, create stuff, etc. but it's also a very good opportunity. All right, so what's next for you? I think next is video. I think we really think like, you know, video is very early uh, right now. Uh, I think it's still, like, you know, if you really know the history of the generative AI, remember DALI-1? Mm -hmm. So DALI-1 was kind of like, feels like a toy and nobody really takes it seriously until DALI-2 comes out and you yeah. people really understand the value. On the video, I think we are kind of like a face of DALI-1, uh, but we are quickly progressing to DALI-2 and that will be like a, a really like step forward in the video. Uh, also, I see another really big thing is personalized AI generators. Uh, Generators we have which are personalized to your style, to your company style, to your branding. This is also like another major thing for us. So if you were to make any predictions about what's going to happen between now and when you're on the stage next year, what are you watching for? You know, I, I hope the next time it will be like the fully produced by AI. I mean, like the, even like Lemonade. And... And actually, yeah, I think about this. I mean, lemonade is like, also, I, I didn't think about, but it's, a, it's not a lemon, it's a lemonade. You know, so think about AI not as a lemon, as lemonade. So basically, it's an opportunity. It's like, it's a, it could be, you know, a cool and nice and fun things, not, a, you know, something you should be scared. So, yeah, I mean, I see the borderline between production and consumption is really very thin. You know, it, usually it used to be, you know, we have a like, small group of people producing content and a very large group of people consuming content. And now you will see like, you know, like much more people are going to produce and consume content at the same time. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you are going to see your personalized movies, your personalized games, which are personalized according to your preferences. It will generate everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. So I think it's mind blowing what could happen within one year. If we see the same progress we have like since last year until now, it's just, you know, maybe, you know, I will be showing completely new products made by AI. Well, oh, we won't hold you to that. You're not expected to yes. bring a crystal ball. Maybe the whole movie will be AI. I mean, like, you know, the whole presentation will, maybe I'll be, I'll be like an AI avatar talking instead of me. So, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> so, all right, last word, final couple minutes here. What's a takeaway that we should leave here with? Yeah, I think embrace it. I do suggest, and... Don't just embrace it, just using like ChatGPT uh, in a naive way. I mean, or use the uh, mid-journey or some other tools, like very naive, like very simple and basic ways. This requires skills. Honestly, I mean, it requires even like more skills than with the traditional kind of tools because you need to fine-tune your prompts. It's not like, you know, just one single prompt. It's really like a process. You need to understand the process. Uh, and, you know, it's entirely like the, you know, what is how you can make the best out of this AI, and that will be your competitive edge. 
if you really can master the usage of these AI tools, it could become your competitive edge. Versus uh, somebody who's going to use like basically chat GPT asking dumb questions and getting dumb answers, yes? So yeah, that's kind of be like the key uh, to master your AI tool usage and become like an art director versus just an artist. Mm. Think about the studio. You are going to run a studio versus being, you know, just an, uh, an artist. All right. Thank you very much for this. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. My pleasure. See you next year. <laughs>